safety. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Tonight, we will visit a topic that we have not talked about in a long time. This program actually started when the war on Iraq was brewing. And when the United States went to war against Iraq, we started telling you the truth about the war and about the United States. Many of you did not like us at that time, but as time went on and we were proven to be right on almost everything that we have talked about. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we will be visiting a topic that I actually visited back in 2006 and 2005. And that topic is the depleted uranium. As you know, if you haven't heard of this phrase, depleted uranium, it's like nuclear bomb, but at a smaller scale. Depleted uranium is a very dense metal it's still radiation, it's still radiant, and as you know, nuclear radiation will stay with us for billions of years. And the effect of this depleted uranium is being seen, as we have shown you back in 2006, when I interviewed the project director for the depleted uranium, at the Pentagon, uh, Doug Rocky, when I interviewed him back in 2006, we are going to play actually, uh, kind of remind you of that interview that I did back in 2006 with uh, Doug Rocky. But um, depleted uranium, still there. And as I understand it, and we had interviews with many experts at that time, one of them is Dahar Jamal, who we are going to see in an interview recently done on uh, Democracy Now. And uh, we have interviewed many experts on the subject back then. We're gonna bring you depleted uranium again because it will be with the Iraqis for many time, many years to come and many generations to come. Until now, the hospital in Fallujah receives many cases, many birth cases, weekly with birth defects. As a matter of fact, on a weekly basis, you might get 10 to 15 cases in that same hospital of birth defects due to depleted uranium that the United States have used in the war against Iraq. Speaking of the war against Iraq, there is a new book that will be published by the New York Times. It's supposed to be written by a very senior personality in the Bush administration. And in that book, he said, what they call secrets of why we want to war against Iraq. This senior, this person who they have not re uh, uh, released the name yet, he said, we were looking for someone to kick ass. He said, we were looking to kick somebody's ass. That was after we already went to Afghanistan he said Afghanistan was not big enough. Now, I don't buy that. Now, I know the war in Iraq, and as you know, the war in Iraq was not done because of 9-11. No. We used what happened on 9-11 to lie to our people here in the United States of why we are going there. We told them that we need to go and kill them on their streets before they come and kill us on our streets. You remember that phrase? Because actually that was a Pentagon phrase. 
Those of you, the families of uh, those of you who were in the service back then, I know you've heard that phrase because that's what the Pentagon, that were the orders to come down to you, the families, that we need to go kill them on their streets before they come and kill us on our streets. That was a lie. You know it's a lie. And this high senior official with a high position in the Bush administration supposedly wrote this book, and he's going to tell us a lot of secrets. The main theme of what he's saying is we just needed to kick someone's ass. Now, that's BS. Now, we know that the war in Iraq was done for Israel at the pleasure of Israel, so the dominoes effect of destroying Arab countries start. And they said back in 1996 in the Clean Break document that the removal of Saddam Hussein from power and the destruction of the Iraqi regime is an Israeli objective in its own right. And they talked about the new Middle East in those documents way before 9-11. And we are seeing now the, what's, uh, what's called the Arab Spring. Of course, we started from the get-go. Before the Arab Spring, before it even bloomed, we told you this Arab Spring is nothing but disaster to the Middle East. And now all the peoples of the Middle East and all the countries of the Middle East they understand that. When I started talking about the Arab Spring not being an Arab Spring, but it is the same old plan to destroy the Arab countries and to destroy the Arab people and make them separate, hating each other, e each other's, and at war with each other's. We told you this, though. You're probably one of the most educated audiences in the world. We told you this years before the Arab Spring, what Israel was going to do. If you have been watching this program for the last 10 years, you know that. So get him back to the depleted uranium. Depleted uranium, it's a product of uranium before we extract the, I guess, the pure uranium or whatever they call it to make nuclear bombs. What is left is nothing but radiation full metal, very dense, and when you shoot it in a tank shell or whatever, you know, you can shoot that there are bullets that are depleted uranium. There are RPGs that are depleted uranium. It, it sliced through a tank like a hot knife sliced through butter. But it's good in battle. In the battlefield, it's perfect. But what happens to the environment? And we have used tons and hundreds of tons of depleted uranium on those Iraqi cities, especially on Fallujah. You remember Fallujah? And we showed you way back then in 2003 and 2004 the pictures that were coming out of Fallujah because of the weapons we were using. And then as the years went on, we started showing you pictures of children who were born deformed. These children are still born deformed in Fallujah, in Iraq. And throughout Iraq, children with one eye, children with deformed. What you are seeing, this is something that we, as the United States of America, have done. You know, we have no moral stand anymore to talk about any terrorists to talk about that we are the good people and they are the bad people. You know, when something happens here, we think, oh, they're terrorists, they did that. You know, look, I do not condone what terrorists act 
were committed against the United States. But you have to understand what we have done to the world. Why? Everyone knows that Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. So were we responsible enough to say and spend the money to take care of those children, to take care of getting rid of this uranium from Fallujah? No, we have not. Ten years after, and we have not. We have a couple of videos that we are going to show you uh, recently. And then we are, after we show you those, we're going to come back and show you part of the interview that I did with Doug uh, Roki, who was the project director of the depleted uranium cleanup project uh, that was uh, what we have used in Iraq against the Iraqi army. He went in there, he was the project director, and uh, the interview between me and Doug Rocky is on YouTube. You can see it, and uh, it's also on Google. It's, it's, it's all over the internet that we have done back in 2006. You can see the full interview with him. But let's uh, show a couple of recent clips to bring you up to date to what is happening in the world of depleted uranium in Iraq. It's all along motorways. Well, it's, 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 it's very, it's very interesting how like it's, it's very interesting how you bring in that last point. You're, you're discussing the issues of radiation exposure, possibly behind the, the, these birth defects, as you say. Uh, we heard reports uh, years ago of, of during the invasion of Iraq of uh, missiles and bullets uh, tipped with depleted uranium being used in the warfare. Are you telling us here at RT that that's because that's the reason behind the majority of these yes, defects? Yes, and that's huge numbers. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> that's absolutely the cause. In fact, in our paper that we published last year we measured the levels of uranium in the hair of these uh, mothers and we were able to look along the strand of hair you know as you know hair grows slowly and so if you look at the end of the hair you get a sort of historical view of what's happening and the, the uranium was increasing towards the end of the hair so we believe quite strongly that it was the uranium weapons the new uranium weapons that were used in Fallujah and of course they used an awful lot of depleted uranium in in Al Basra as well so so that's also probably the cause of that well you discuss you discuss this issue of, of radiation exposure of missiles or bullets being tipped with depleted uranium being used by British and American forces in Iraq. The U.S. Defense Department has responded to this report by claiming there's no official evidence indicating a connection between military action and birth defects in Iraq. This seems like a bit of a, a backhanded response to such a severe, severe hi issue we're talking about here. Well, of course, of course they would say that, and they would, they would attempt to cover up anything that they've done. But I have to say that it's getting increasingly difficult, the more and more papers that are being brought out on this issue. And I reported this whole uh, 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 issue about the uranium in the hair and the congenital malformations at the United Nations Human Rights Council last month. And there was an awful lot of interest in it there. So we would hope that the United Nations might actually put some pressure on the United States now to come clean about the kind of weaponry that they were using. And I'm sure they were using a lot of experimental weaponry in Fallujah, which is why we see these enormous increases in congenital malformation. Increases which have never been seen after any war in the past, I have to say, unless really serious agents like Agent Orange were, were being used. And there's no evidence that anything like that was being used in Iraq. All right, Professor Christopher Busby from the European Committee on Radiation Risks. Many thanks for coming on RT today. Thank you. Okay. And um, we are going to see in the next clip uh, with Dahar Jamal. Now, I interviewed Dahar Jamal uh, way back in 2006. He actually went to Fallujah and got some pictures.